This sea is Oscar Bevis for the stomping ground, powered by Wow Hydrate and available on his own for the first time in a couple of weeks. Mr. Eddie Hearn joins me. What's happening, mate? Last... See you. Post fight Philly. Wow. Yeah. Is this the longest you haven't been on the stomping ground? Probably is actually. Where's Parsons? Is he in Qatar or something? Yeah. Have you not seen his vlogs? He's such a lemon, isn't he? You not subscribe to Parsons vlogs? No. Do I subscribe to Parsons vlogs? No. Oscar, I do not subscribe to Parsons Vlogs. Do you know how many features you're going to be making in Mate, Parsons Vlogs? Honestly, I'm done with Parsons. It's over. I've given back, him the, back, I've given him the leg up. Yeah, no, you're back right. I'll, me, yeah. I'll give you a little leg up. Go on. Can I ask you one thing before we start yeah. about today? What the fuck were you doing in that drip advert? Do you know what it is? Yeah, I, I don't care. Like, Big Zoo said to me, I can't believe you just stick anything on and you don't really give a fuck. I said, I don't care. I don't. Like, it is what it is, isn't it? So, but I think that's a great way to be, personally. Did you wear a fake tan? No, a lot of few people said that. Someone said it looked like Dale Winton. I thought, fuck, that's a bit harsh. <laughs> I was going to say, it must have been hot in Dallas. Cause no, well, we had, I was in, look, I was in Philly. I was in Dallas. I think it was the light as well. And I was wearing gold. And I was in Miami. I had a couple of days there. Sun. So, you know, you can't... I'm always 10. I can't mm-hmm. believe Oscar De La Hoya looked at that and thought he needs eight weeks to prepare Mate, for Eddie too Hunt. big, too strong. Told you. Like Carl for GGG. Yeah. Um, Pat Brown, you lot have gone full schmooze much. Mm. You even said up there, you said, we haven't done a signing like this since AJ, mm. especially from the, the GB squad. Um, you guys know he's going to be good. And just from the setting today, you can tell that... I guess you guys want to impress yeah, him and course, but like, let him know look, he's made the right we, choice. We know that. There is clearly a, an older guard of British boxing that is in the final stages, right? And some of which have departed. Tony Bellew, David Hay, Amir Khan, James DeGale, George Groves over the last three or four years. We've got to make an investment in the young fighters that have the potential to go on, light up the sport, fill arenas, and ones that have real ability. And Pat Brown, when I look at the emerging fighters coming through the Olympics, He's the guy that we focused on. He's the guy that we know has a crazy fan base in Manchester. He's a guy that we know loves to flatten people. He's a guy we know has a lot of pedigree and ability. He speaks well. He looks great. This is a star, and we needed to get him, and everybody wanted him. You know, promoters were throwing everything at him, houses, everything. And, you know, we won the race. And therefore, when we spend that kind of money and we make that kind of investment, you've got to make it pay. Because otherwise, you're not going to get the most out of your, your investment. And that's what we've got to do. We have to build Pat Brown into a star. He's going to get every opportunity to go and, you know, fight all over the world. And the only thing will let him down, I just said to him there, is that he doesn't work hard enough or he's not good enough. And I don't believe either of those will be a factor. What will be music to everyone's ears is the talk sport clip that's been played a couple of times where he goes, my guilty pleasure is a tear up. Loves it. I saw that, yeah. I was like, get him. But you love it. I mean, it, you know, everyone knows that People like excitement. People like fighters that go in there and knock people out. Well, that is Pat Brown. He's a vicious, heavy-handed son of a gun. And you're going to love watching him fight. I mean, it wasn't the most successful Olympic cycle for Team GB in a boxing sense. Um, And Pat didn't medal, obviously, went out in the first round. But it was Pat Brown. Pat was the one that people were talking about as kind of, I guess, the man you want to get your hands on from this, this cycle. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you look at, the team GB has got some great fighters you know Delicious Ori in there as well who knows what he's going to do um, we've signed three other Olympians as well that we haven't announced yet from other countries which will be announced in the next sort of few days and few weeks but again like you have to be bringing the best young talent forward Pat's only 25 years of age he's got a great run in the sport the cruiserweight division's red hot at the moment he's going to need a year to, to have his seven or eight fights and then he's into the championship fights it's not going to take long but like I said massive support in this city and you'll see that very early on I mean you'll see it tonight you know in the evening with event that's going to be rammed it must be good if you're putting his face on the menu exactly. um, Dallas a winning trip unbelievable I mean a fucking fight like as well, by the way. just I've had some great moments in boxing that was right up there I mean that was heart on your sleeve away day just turning them over. Oh, it was it was a beautiful moment for Katie Taylor. And, and I don't think I've ever seen you as elated as you were in the ring. No, because I mean look, when when you're 
you're the A side, but you're in the away corner, right? Everything's against you. The crowd are against you. The promotions against you. You know they don't really want you there. Obviously, we'd had our little incidents during the week as well. You know, during the fight, you've got me, you've got Nikisa, you've got MVP team, Walter, please. And and you know, May, May, can I get Americano, please? Yeah. And it meant a lot. You know, they're screaming things out during the fight. We're screaming things out during the fight. You know, you get in the ring, and I, I, I kind of at that moment in the ring, I'm kind of thinking. You know what? We never get the rubber to green. Madrimov against Crawford. I thought we edged that fight. Bivol better be. I really thought we won that fight. I bet we don't get this either. And it's like 95-94, 95-94, 95-94. And I'm like, and I'm, all I can think is, this is going to be really painful. I'm going to have to put up with that lot. Gloating, jumping up and, and just keep your cool. Whatever way this goes, take it on the chin and still fucking let's have it let's have it I mean like just and did you aim at anyone specific when you was no, going look, over the ropes look where Nikisa was and some of his family and some of uh, the MVP team there was a lot said during the fight I thought it was disrespectful but it's the moment do you know what I mean and I probably shouldn't have reacted the way I reacted and I, I said and people keep telling me don't apologise we love it but if I did apologise, if I did offend anyone, I do apologise. But that's what it meant to me. And there, there's a lot said in the heat at the moment. Stuff that was shouted out about Katie Taylor during that fight. It infuriated me. And when we won, it was just that was just emotion. It was nothing personal, you know. But yeah, I, 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 I just lost my shit. To be honest with you, totally lost my shit. Rightly so. That was a serious yeah, win yeah, on a waste yeah. soil, like you said. Yeah. Um, can we shout out Brian Peters? Oh, listen. I was going to say unsung hero. Brian, Brian, Brian Peters now gone viral, has not he? Make your decision, big boy. <laughs> Is, it, would it be fair to say that you felt a little bit sorry for the guy in the suit who was probably just being given orders? Yeah, probably. Like, we were blocked from getting into Katie Taylor's changing room. We were blocked from going to the press conference. Would it be fair to say that's coming from the top? Who knows? Like, it doesn't... Look, I... Despite my back and forth with Nikita and Jake, I give them huge respect for the event what they did, what they continue to do, and how they continue to fight against the system. I don't like a lot of what they do. It doesn't really matter. It hasn't just got to be for me. The viewership, the event was unbelievably successful, right? But I just felt like I said to, um, you know, Nikisa on, I think it was the day of the way, and like, I know you don't really like us, but there's certain... Um, things that you provide to a, a promote yeah cur a common courtesy and you know he said there was a bit of a misunderstanding whatever look it's, it's done now and maybe we can make the third fight you know I think it's a massive fight um, but we want to win and they want to win you know they were devastated they didn't lose we were ecstatic that we won next week we might be devastated that we lose it's just that's sport if I had to put to you that Katie Taylor just for the sake of this question has one final fight in her career at Croke Park do you go Serrano Trilogy or Cameron because it's 1-1? Tough question. I mean, I think based on the success of Taylor Serrano 2 and the viewership, that's a bigger fight. But Katie wants the third fight with Cameron. You know, I think, I think as long as we are all sensible, I think there's a very good chance that we can make Taylor Serrano 3. And that's, that's not in terms of sensible, like all playing the game it's just working together to maximise the revenue and you know like we you got to take your hat off to Katie because in that fight she went in as the away fighter right she kind of gave up all the home advantages in that fight and she went into the backyard and she got the win but I'm not saying we'd never do that again but we want to be respected and especially when you're tuning up yeah and we want to but yeah like and I think a lot of people right now would come out and say, we're two nil up, why would, why would we take a third? The answer it's so is, because it's epic. Though, you know, Katie Taylor and Amanda could fight six times, and every one would be a fight of the year contender. So, you know, hopefully we can get our heads together and provide these two great fighters with maybe a final opportunity. Yeah. And on the undercard, Nikisa versus Tony Bellew. Yeah, I mean... Tony was... Uh, was, it, I don't, was it disrespectful uh, from Nikisa to just dismiss what Belly has done for the sport? Um, like dismiss any achievement? I don't, I don't think... Look, Nikisa's not really 
a boxing guy. Like he's a commercial guy, very smart guy. So you're saying he wouldn't be aware too much of what Prob- Tony's prob- achieved? Probably not. But uh, and maybe he's not aware of how impressive Tony's resume is. I mean, to win British Commonwealth European World Championships, like that's a pr- and fight for the undisputed World Championship. That's pretty impressive. So, but maybe that's not impressive to Nikita. But Nikita. So, um, yeah, Tony is a legend of the sport and, and a great man who's given a lot. Not just himself to the sport, but to his community as well. Yeah. And shout out to Paddy Power for the little... Yeah, I didn't know anything about that, by the way. Literally, I'd, someone messaged me going, have you seen Bellew? I was like, what? I was like, oh, Tone, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm sure he got paid handsomely. Yeah, yeah. um, in terms of Jake Paul, Mike Tyson, just a quick one on that. I know MVP have had to put a statement out about the potential of it being rigged. There were people saying Mike might have pulled a few shots. Obviously, the narrative that Jake's carried Mike through the end. Um, watching that... How did you make, or what did you make of kind of the ending of the fight? I will say nothing. I don't. There was I that don't, narrative that Jake might have carried Mike a little bit. To no, I think I, th- I don't buy into a, a, a fight being rigged of any means. I mean, I, I agree with what Jake Paul and Nikita said in the statement, which is you know people are betting on this fight. It's a criminal offence to to rig a fight, and I don't believe that happens. And I don't believe Mike Tyson would agree to that anyway. So I don't buy into that at all. But I do think that. In the end, Jake Paul probably did take it easy. And I think he even said it himself because the guy's 58 years of age. They've had a, a scrap for a few rounds and then Mike's tired considerably and he was there for the taking. Do you want to take him out? You know? So I think, although I was never over the moon with the fight, I'm glad that Mike heard the final bell, got out of there, wasn't harmed, wasn't injured and we can all just move on. But because of what you said, he heard the final bell, got paid and wasn't injured. That then brings in the potential of Mike doing this again, does it? Like if uh, there listen. had been something that had gone wrong, we might never have seen him in the ring again because it went so perfectly in that sense. Yeah, look, look, we live in a world, Oscar. I'm sure Mike Tyson could make another payday in a fight. But sooner or later, something bad will happen and we have to, as a community, in a boxing community, especially with an all-time great, you're not talking about a YouTuber, Yeah. You're talking about one of the greatest fighters of all time that's 58 years of age. We need to protect him because he's a fighter and he'll always fight for money. He's a prize fighter. But we have to be strong enough as, as the fight community to say, no, come on. You, you know, whether you thought that was wrong or right, that fight, it's over now. He's okay. He's made his money. Let's chill. You know? When, as a boxing community, do we start to take like an art of better be of calling out Jake Paul when do we start to take that seriously I mean Jake's never going to fight anyone who's you know of, of that ability unless the money is too much to turn down and that's like the only person that Jake can really fight in that respect is Canelo Alvarez because the money would be significant enough to take the beating yeah it's a bit like it's a bit like me and Oscar De La Hoya I would fight Oscar De La Hoya if the money was there and I would take a beating. But... I mean, no, it's got to be big, because I think I said 50 million to you, and you told me to 50? fuck off. 50? No, it's not that much, Oscar, you know. No, 15. Oh, 15. Yeah, no, that might get it okay, done. Yeah. Yeah. But on a serious note, like, Jake's not an idiot. He's a smart kid. He, he's also got... He's a competitor, and he's probably a little bit deluded about his ability, as a lot of people are. I'm one of them, right? But if the money was there, and he was going to get in there with Canelo, he knows he's going to get a paste in. So if the money's right, maybe he does it. And I wouldn't be surprised if Canelo did it because he's all about the money and he'd probably quite enjoy it. Maybe a lot of people would. But I feel I, like I, he'd be fighting with a boxing world on his back. Who, Canelo? It'd be, I think he'd be just fine. Um, he'd need it, by the way, yeah, can I yeah, just yeah, say? Yeah, yeah. But, he'd you be know, fighting with the support of the boxing yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. But And Jake, Jake's a money man. And if the money, like I said, if the money's there to take a beating, Jake will take his beating. If not, they're smart with their matchmaking. You know? Um, George Cambosis. Yes. Yeah, good news. Yeah, great sign. I mean, look, Australia's an important market for us. We've got, obviously, Jai Opatai fighting on January the 8th, defending his title. Um, you know, we've got Liam Paro fighting next week. Sky Nicholson's just had a good win as well, looking for another fight. Um, loads of Australian talent. Another big signing we're announcing this week as well from Australia. Justice Huni. I mean, we've got a lot of fighters, and now we bring in arguably the biggest name in Australian boxing, coming off a couple of defeats, but, you know, to Devin Haney and 
and Lomachenko, which is fair enough. You know, obviously had that win um, in the US as well en route. But for me, we've got so many fighters at 140 pounds. Obviously, if Liam Paro was to beat Richardson Hitchens, that sets up a big All-Australian World Championship fight. But we have so many fights for George Cambosas. I like him. I think he's ballsy. I think he wears his heart on his sleeve. And I think we can do something big in Australia. And even better than that, we're working with Lou DiBella. I mean, the whole world has changed, you know, which is good fun. And it's about time. And looking forward to, you know, we, we've got a show on January the 8th with Tasman Fighters, with Jai Opatire. February could be Cambosis. You know, March could be Sky Nicholson in Australia. There is a chance we might be running three back-to-back -back events. Or we combine the two and the three fights. So... We'll have to see, but exciting times for Australian boxing. Eddie Hearn and Lou DeBella, what the I know. hell is going Love on? Love it. Um, final one. I know you said that the talks have opened or restarted for Conor Ben and Chris Eubank Jr. Um, it's only a couple of days ago, but anything you can yeah, tell open, us? Yeah, open, really. I mean, still a long way to go, but I think everybody knows that's the fight to make. And, you know, hopefully. Even if Barrios is... Yeah, I mean, look, it's difficult because you've got the Eubank fight, which is obviously financially much, much bigger, but then the Barrios fight could be for the world title, so... It's difficult, but, um, you know, we're, we're ready to, to move. And I think the smart thing to do, thank you, get some milk, mate. Yeah, thank you. Um, is to make a, uh, a fight with Chris Eubank Jr. Just a final one. And I mentioned Parsons Vlogs, right? Yeah. Can we nail it in the calendar that me, you and Parson hit the town for a couple of drinks for Parsons Vlogs? Um, say that again? Can we nail it in the calendar that me, you and Parsons hit the town somewhere next year for a couple of drinks for Parsons Vlogs? No. I'm not getting involved with Parsons Vlogs. Full stop. Thank you, Stomping Ground, and good night.